Let's look at punishment then and how that fits in with operant conditioning. So you can see from the video there, the referee has given the player the red card as a form of punishment. And we assume that he's made a really horrendous foul tackle or handled the ball or done something that he shouldn't have done. And he's been punished for it. So how does that fit into operant conditioning in terms of the SR bond and desirable behavior or desirable outcomes and undesirable outcomes or responses? So when we punish someone, we want to stop the undesirable outcome becoming the prominent response or the dominant response. So you can see here that punishment then is any action taken to avoid an undesirable response occurring or reoccurring. And what we're trying to do here is to weaken the incorrect SR bond. Let me give you an example from hockey, which is what I coach. So I really, really keen that my students and my, my players, my learners, receive the ball on what we call the strong side. So it's just outside their right foot. Now, sometimes the ball is past them outside their left foot. And what I really want them to do, the desired response, is to move their feet, shuffle their feet around so that they get themselves in a position where they're able to receive the ball on their strong side, which is outside their right foot. But sometimes the students are a little bit lazy and they don't bother moving their feet. They just turn their stick and pick up the, the ball, receive the ball on their reverse stick, which is the undesired response. I don't want them to do that. And that picking up of the ball on the reverse stick is an incorrect response. So it's an incorrect response to the stimulus of the ball coming towards them on their left foot. What I want them to do when the ball comes towards them on their left foot, towards their left foot, I want them to move around so they pick the ball up on their right foot. That's the correct desired response. So how do I stop my students from being lazy and just turning their stick around and receiving the ball on the reverse stick? I do it by giving them punishment. Now, I'm not necessarily going to send them off and tell them that they've got a red card and they're never going to play again. But what we might do as coaches, and again, your PE teachers, etc., and your coaches, sports coaches, may have done something similar, is when you do something wrong, you have to have, do a forfeit. I know in the in the rugby, the coaches where I, where I work, you know, you drop the ball or you miss a tackle, you've got to go and do some running. Uh, or you might have to do some sit-ups or press-ups, etc. So there's some kind of punishment the coach gives when the performance is incorrect. As I said, it could be press ups, push ups, it could be running laps, etc. So the key here about punishment, again, just to recap, is that it's action that is taken to avoid the undesired response occurring. We don't want them to do the wrong thing. So we've got to stop them from doing the wrong thing, which means we need to weaken the incorrect SR bond. And we do that by punishing them every time they do something incorrectly. Please, please, please be mindful, be aware that there is a difference between negative reinforcement and punishment. Just to recap on that, negative reinforcement is the removal of criticism, which serves to strengthen the SR bond. It's the removal of criticism when the performer carries out the desired response and punishment is given to an individual when they are carrying out the incorrect response, the undesired response.